everyone, welcome to the Dice Tower, and I'm Camilla Claghorn. Today I'm going to do a rapid fire roundup. Now this is my first in this series, but this is a series that we do where there are games that we've played here in the office with our own personal groups, something like that, but for one reason or another we weren't part of the review. So they've come through the Dice Tower, they've been reviewed by somebody here as part of the main staff, but we weren't included in the review. Maybe it was uh, just another voice and I'd just be echoing something someone else said, or I was out of the office that day, or I don't know, just one reason or another. But I still have thoughts that I want to share with you and kind of let you know where I came down on those. So let's get started. All right, now first up we have Astra. I'm gonna come in at a six for Astra. I think this game really caught me just with the aesthetics as well as the theme. It's a flip and write of sorts where you are flipping over uh, when you complete different constellations, you're flipping over a new one, but ultimately you're all trying to vie control of different constellations. I found that really interesting, but at the same time, you had so many options that there really wasn't any tough decision making to, making to it. I found myself just kind of going through the motions of this game. I also felt like it overstayed its welcome on the table. It was just too long for what it is. So I really like the aesthetics of it. Me mechanisms wise, I don't really have a problem with anything in the game, but I'm also just not drawn to bring it to the table over and over again. I'd happy to sit down. I think it's good. There was a couple, it, it was, it was, <laughs> interesting, but not as engaging as what I would want for something like this. So it's not bad, just kind of flat. And that's gonna be Astro with a six for me. Next up was Sea Salt and Paper. I'm gonna come in at a 6.5 on this game. I liked it a little bit more than Astro, but it still didn't quite, um, keep my attention through the gameplay. This is gonna be a set collection with hand management, but quite a bit of push your luck. And I really liked that element of this game. I liked the fact that you don't know when the end of the round is coming and you have that choice and tension of a decision on, do I keep going to get more and try to widen that gap between our scores or go ahead and capitalize on what I think I have? Do I think they're gonna end it beforehand so I go ahead and capitalize on this or do I not? It's interesting tension, but it still just wasn't enough. It was tension in the game, but not enough to make me want to pull it back again. So not bad, but just um, one that I'd happily sit down and play for a couple minutes, but I don't want to do two or three rounds of it, uh, which is ultimately what one play requires. So with that, I'm going to come in at a 6.5 on sea salt and paper. This next game I was so excited about from the moment I first heard of it. I was like, oh, I cannot wait to get my hands on that. It's going to be the follow-up to King of Tokyo, King of Monster Island. And I, I hate calling it a follow-up because it doesn't replace King, I'm sorry, King of Tokyo. King of Monster Island is a cooperative version of King of Tokyo. So it's, it's, it is a follow-up set in the same universe, but it's going to be a cooperative version of this game. That made me so excited. King of Tokyo is a favorite in my family and one that we get to the table quite a bit. So to put the cooperation on top of that, which is one of my favorite ways to play, as well as one of my son's favorite ways to play, oh, I was so excited to get my hands on it. Unfortunately, this disappointed me a little bit. I'm gonna come in at a seven for this. And that's because I found a couple things wrong, not wrong with the gameplay, but that kind of held me back from it. I have some concerns on the difficulty scale of this. The game is really hard. And sometimes I feel like that difficulty can't really be overcome without luck. So you kind of feel a little lucky with your wins and unlucky with your loses. And it just kind of feels like this uphill battle the whole time in not necessarily a positive way. It just kind of wears you down. As well as I found it was kind of finicky with the uh, monster movement and how they activate. I found that was finicky and kind of procedural, which for a family weight game, I want that to be a little bit quicker and smoother. I want to get back to the gameplay. That being said, the gameplay and kind of that combo-tastic, you know, you're rolling your dice and trying to do the best you can with that luck, deciding what to use, how to combo it best, what dice to lock and save for the next person. I find that's fantastic. So it's kind of a mixed bag for me and that's why I'm coming at a seven on King of Monster Island. All right, next up we have The Wolves and I'm gonna come in at an eight on this game. This game, I didn't really know anything about it going into it, so it kind of caught me off guard, but it has a lot of things that I like. I like that combo building. I really, really love unlocking powers, um, which you do on this, on your own player board as you're trying to build up your, your pack. Ultimately, you're trying to 
build up your territory on this main board. And I love the concept of the different terrain tiles and having to have that terrain available in order to know where you can go on the map, as well as what you can place down and having the right combo set up at the right time. It's a really interesting puzzle. And what I like about it is I think it hits a sweet spot where it's an interesting puzzle that you feel smart with. It doesn't feel completely punishing. There's always something you can do. Um, so there's always something you can do. Maybe you take a different turn to uh, upgrade something or you you go find a different route to go on the board based on what terrain you do have available but you can always plan ahead and do something so it gives you that sense of accomplishment I think the theme is there I think it's really strong in this one in fact getting into the theme kind of helps you understand some of the finicky rules of this game. So with that I really enjoyed my my play of the wolves and that's going to come in as 8.0 for me. This next game was one of the biggest and most hyped and also most talked about games of 2022, I think. And that's going to be Endless Winter. I'm going to come in at 8.5, but I want to put a footnote on that 8.5 that I think this can go up pretty significantly. I very much enjoyed my play of Endless Winter. This has a little bit of everything. It's definitely a strategy game. It's got some worker placement. It's got some deck building. Um, it's got some, just everything. I mean, I could sit here and just hand management. It has, uh, you know, resources. It's, it's got a lot of different things going on. Um, but I don't think that that detracts from the play. I think there's a lot of moving parts and a lot of things you can do, but ultimately those actions are very simple. So it's really about comboing and planning your turns and what you have available and that hand management that I think really sells this. It's about, I can do all four of these actions in this turn and I want to, but what order do I do them in to maximize my return as well as push the luck if I think they might also be going there, I want to go there to get a little bit of benefit. All right, they did go there. Is it still worth me going there? I'm not going to get that maximum benefit, but I still get something and I like that. I like it in a game like this with a lot of these moving parts where you never have a wasted turn. And I think that this really sings with that. I do wish that the theme was a little bit stronger in this one. Um, whereas understanding the theme kind of helps the gameplay. It is absolutely stunning to look at. And I think the visuals very much carry the theme in this game. I'd like to see a little bit more in the gameplay, but that's, that's a, a minor complaint with this one. I only see it going up and I do think this is a game that's going to reward more plays. Um, I have quite a few plays under my belt, but not enough to where I can firmly say this is the rating I'm going to give it, you know, uh, for, for a long time. I'm at 8.5 right now. I definitely see room for that to go up as I do explore a little bit more strategy and, and different strategies than what I've employed in the past. So for now, Endless Winter, 8.5. And the final game I want to talk to you about is Flashback Zombie Kids. This is going to be a follow-up to Zombie Kids, which was a legacy kids game from a couple years ago. And this is going to be Flashback in which you are the kids having flashbacks or memories and trying to put together your memories and talk about the different parts of something that happened to ultimately solve a crime conundrum, if you will, something that happened, trying to figure out what happened and why it happened. So this is going to be it's cooperative as well. I'm going to come in at a nine for this game. Um, my son really enjoyed Zombie Kids. Uh, we did find it a little bit repetitive after a while, but on getting those unlocks kind of refresh it. They were well paced through it. What I really like about Flashback Zombie Kids, with its choose your own adventure narration kind of drive, I find that the kid is, my kid specifically, was never bored with this game. There's always something to do. And it's so exciting to see that light bulb moment. If he's like, oh, I thought this was happening. But if we're looking at it from this perspective, it's actually this. And to see that self, that, that sense of discovery in this game is, is just a level of engagement that I really think is so powerful in this game and they really capitalize well on it. So my son very much enjoyed this. As a parent, I really enjoyed it. I enjoyed seeing him use these deduction skills to try to come to an end result and conclusion, but also trying to maintain that flexibility in the deduction. It was just a great, not just learning moment, but just experience with him. And I can't speak highly enough about it. So I'm coming in at a nine for flashback zombie kids. 
All right, and there you have it. That's my first rapid fire roundup. That's how I came down on these six games. Have you played them? What did you think? Have you had a chance to get these to the table more and more? And do you think that uh, would make it better or worse on the ones that I was kind of sway on? So let me know what you think. But until next time, keep playing games. I'm Camilla Claghorn.